Hi, thanks for coming back. I'm here today to talk to you about more dolls in part three of the fam now famous Rodney Waller auction collection of his, of his Madame Alexander dolls. Really extraordinary examples that some collectors say, I've never seen anything like that. Well, this is part three and the final part of the Rodney Waller collection. And I'm just going to, instead of showing you a lot of dolls, because you've come to realize how many wonderful examples he has, um, they are, there are, oh, I think like 350 of them in this auction. I've just brought a couple that I wanted to give a special attention to so you would notice. I have here three examples from the very rare early composition portrait series, the mystery series that was done by Madame Alexander about 1936, 37, 38, in that time period. And what is extraordinary about these dolls is their impeccable original condition. You don't find that with composition dolls. You just don't. They are absolutely flawless. And so not only do they have wonderful detail of costuming, but they have incredible collections with a very special painting that she did on these faces. But they also have extraordinary original condition. Not just the face or the arms, but the entire bodies are flawless. And this is the very famous uh, Princess um, Flavia, who was um, based upon the movie The Prisoner of Zenda, a particular favorite of Madame. And let's just look at all the details on her costuming. And as I lather away, I'm going to turn the doll around so you can see it from all angles. It's absolutely extraordinary. Little pearl necklace with the matching pearl earrings and then the little seed pearls coming down the front of her dress enclosed in little brass gilt stars. I mean, every little detail is done right. And before we go any further, I wanna tip her forward so you can see her hair because I wanna focus on that for the rest of this talk, the wonderful coiffures that Madame did. And look at this coronet of braid that is up at the very crown of her head and then circled by the little metallic, I guess I could call it a, coronet or a crown, however you want to call it. Gorgeous facial painting. And look at the wonderful costume. She has the center skirt with the flaring skirts on the side, all of her undergarments. She has a, a distinctive, um, as the three dolls up here do, they had the distinctive, like the, the metal fitted um, bosom that would make allow them to wear these very elaborate gowns. And let's show you the back of her gown so you can see how magnificent it is. As always, Madame was meticulous in searching out and seeking the very finest fabrics. And for these specialty portrait dolls, she really went all the way because she wasn't making that many of them. So she, when she would find a source, if it was, um, sometimes she would find them from couturiers who were making costumes for real people, and she wouldn't have to purchase yards and yards and yards and yards. She would purchase what she would need for the production she was thinking to make. Always a budget and watching expenses were on her mind. She started with really nothing and had to build this business by herself, by her own wits, and it was her talent and skill that made her grow. That was a very, very beautiful one. Even the fingernails are painted. Now, this girl is gracing the cover of the Waller Part Three catalog and I want you to look at her face carefully. Look at the unique painting of the brows and the lashes. Very, very extraordinary type of work making her unique. Look at these roses on the gown. Shaded. They're not just pink roses but they're shaded petals. Um, silk uh, fabric, stiffened silk uh, put on here and just wonderful. And look at the side of her hair. Look at that. Oh. You don't find these. Do you know how hard it is for this to have, I mean, how few of them were ever made to begin with? And then to have it be preserved in this condition is absolutely phenomenal. Truly one of a kind. She's wearing her clover leaf um, gilt tag, which says ballerina. Very, very beautiful. You can see again her very uniquely designed coiffure. The petals in her hair, I'm counting them as you're looking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve petals at the side of her hair. Twelve. Beautiful costume all the way around. Two coiled braids 
at the back of her head and the side part extending all the way down the back of her head uh, instead of just the hair combed smoothly back. Again, a lot of attention paid to making a very, very distinct hairstyle. This is a very magnificent girl and well worthy of being on the cover. And then when we move over to the other side, we find the very, very lovely um, fashionable lady of an earlier period. And again, Madam was with the rosebuds because look at the bonnet that she is wearing and I'm gonna tip her head forward so you can see the top of that bonnet. It's absolutely wonderful. Now we have more, the roses are more white with a little bit of pink shaded tinging on the inside. And when I turn it around, we'll come back again to the front in a minute. But look at how it has the upturned brim with the rose satin ties and then they're streaming down and then they're captured in the lower part of her hair. Nothing was casual in what Madame did. Everything was extraordinary. And if I count the roses on here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. It looks like 22 roses are arranged on the top of that magnificent hat. Very, very soft mohair wig in the original coiffure. Again, she has the metal fitted bodice to give shape to her dress. She's holding her little matching reticule. And the dress is, ma is made of really fine, fine lace. The pearls, it's not a pearl necklace, but it's seed pearls around the neckline of the dress, which is a very special type of feature on the doll. So now let me show you some other things from this auction that I find particularly fascinating. So in cataloging part three of the Rodney Waller collection, I became more taken than ever. I had been before, but in this time, I really was starting to pay attention to the coiffures because I noticed that when collectors are buying these dolls, they're always there looking for certain faces they like, and then they want certain particular costumes, and they might like brides, or they might like fashionable costumes or children, but nobody seems to pay attention to the coiffure. And I cannot imagine how she must have been so much into high style or she must have had very, very famous beauticians working in her place, helping her to style wigs that really made her dolls extraordinary. Now, one, one could say fortunately or unfortunately, the dolls were designed for children. So many of them got in the hands of children and if the doll had beautiful hair, guess what the child thought? Oh, I love her hair, I, let me comb it a little. And so that's why we don't find many Alexander dolls with their original coiffure. And when we do, wow, what a treat. They are so very special. Um, luckily, many of them were, well, you know how it is. There were a lot of moms and grandmas that bought these dolls for the kids. And then they said, okay, but we're gonna put it in the cabinet and then you can look at it every once in a while. And that was kind of sad. That's why I say, unfortunately, it was kind of sad for the child, but happy for us today because we have the original dolls. And I have here a really great selection of dolls. Mostly I just wanted to show you them to show you the different styles. Here we have from her wonderful, again, the continuing the portrait series that we had just been talking about. Now everyone, when they look at this, immediately looks at the extraordinary costume and extraordinary it is, no doubt about it. Let me turn it around so you can see the, the tears, a bustle at the back, and look at the quality of lace that she found for this. I mean, if you could find this lace today, you would, it, this is an extraordinary piece of artistry, in the wonderful embroidered lace. But when I'm cataloging the doll, here's what I'm doing. I'm saying, well, wait, what is the hair underneath there? And look indeed at the hair. So I'm going to very ca carefully hold up her veil and turn her around so you can see the arranged curls at the top, the arranged curls at her nape, and when I turn it some more, you can see how her hair is drawn back at the sides and then the flowers are accommodated to her head to match the line of the hair and they extend over the entire top of her head on both sides and then at the front, this very, very dainty and lovely arrangement of beautiful blonde curls. A superb, superb coiffure. The ballerinas always got their special attention, and I think that Madame, when she did the ballerinas, was always trying to 
factor in what the ballerina was doing. There was a lot of movement going on, so they couldn't have their hair swirling all over the place. So she copied what the ballerinas themselves did, and she would arrange elaborate chignons or clusters of hair at the top of the head, but always arranged with little um, flowers along the edge of them to give them shape, and then these dainty little curls at the front. The material of her wigs ranged from the soft mohair that was used with the originally composition dolls and went into some of the early of the hard plastic. And then she eventually started using the saran hair, and which allowed it to have a really glossy sheen. And I'm going to show you a few that, in my mind, are extraordinary because of the glorious sheen they've done. Here we have one of her early brides, her early uh, Margaret Face Brides, and look, now she, you see she's very beautiful from the front. She has that lovely san suntan complexion that everyone loves, and you can see how really what a gracious, refined lady she is, the way her hair is pulled away very nicely. But let me turn her around, and let me show you the back of her hair head. Here we're coming around, and look what's happened. The hair has been drawn back, and pulled into two rolled curls at the back of her head. And what's even more interesting, what she had do, did very often was she would make the coiffure and then she would arrange the costume to accommodate to the coiffure. So in this case, the veil went underneath those two rolled curls at the back. Notice the quality of the wig. You can see the extra tying of the threads in the part, which went all the way down the back too. And sometimes um, we tend to forget in measuring quality of pieces. Look at the, in costumes and wigs, whatever, the amount of stitching and um, layers and refinements that went into the making of them. And this was certainly true of her wig. She made them very, very beautifully. And there's that lovely bride waiting for her runway appearance. We have here another ballerina, and I really liked um, her coiffure because she has, again, the top knot that we talked about, topped by the arrangement of flowers. But instead of having the curly little bangs, she has her hair elegantly swept back and then captured at the back in the cluster of curls. And when we come around to the front again, look at right above her ears, almost tiny little um, arranged curls. I, I hate the phrase spit curls, but that's kind of the phrase that we use. So little spit curls above her ears just to soften that, that um, almost harsh kind of look, but a very, very beautiful coiffure. And by the way, a very rare ballerina costume color. Very, very beautifully done and just wonderfully maintained. When Madame started doing the Elise doll, she really got carried away with with coiffures, and I wanted to show you an example because we have, oh, this collection, the part three, has some superb brides in the collection. And those of you who collect Alexander brides are going to be absolutely delighted at what the ones you're going to find, ranging from that early portrait onto the Margaret face, onto the Elise, even little Wendy Kins. They're, they're just wonderful. Sissettes, brides galore. Well, here are three of the Elise brides, and I brought them out to you because each one has not only a different color coiffure, but a very, very different style. This one may perhaps be the most unique, and I'm going to twirl her around. Look at the front of her hair with that tight arrangement of curls and her forehead, very, very different from anything else you see. And then look, short cropped hair, very different, not the long hair with curls, an attempt to be very, very um, stylish from her time period. And the curls on her forehead are little arranged scallops across the forehead. They're wonderful. And then we move again to Elise, and here's one of the more refined coiffures like we were seeing earlier. But she's added a little touch to this, by the way, because here we have tiny, dainty, dainty little curls right along her forehead that add to it. And at the back, captured, has the barrette, this very signature barrette that you'll find on many of her dolls, um, the thin metal barrette. Uh, that would hold the hair in place, and then the curls at the nape of the neck. And notice also on the three Elises that I'm showing you that each of their coronet of flowers 
supporting the veil is different. Different flowers and different arrangements. We have two uh, like coronets here, but completely different. And then on the third example, it's really quite unique. Let me hold her up so you can see the top of it. We have like a little square, it's almost like a little garden patch. It's really very, very distinctive and unusual. And that emphasizes her hair, which again has similar to the other one, to the other blonde, but has um, more curls. It doesn't have just the, the few little curls and then has the hair drawn back and arranged at the nape of her neck. So an example of some of the many coiffures and I, I just, I'd like to, I don't know, maybe I've never seen it. Maybe there is a book um, on coiffures of Alexander, but somebody needs to do one and show all of them in detail all around because I think uh, collectors would really be impressed and maybe that's an angle if you're looking for a special thing to collect in Alexander's start looking for dolls with special coiffures and I'm going to show you a few more examples. Now if you're all fans of Little Women Dolls, the Little Women book to begin with and everyone should still read that book. It was a pivotal book of my childhood. You know I grew up in a family with three other sisters so we were like the four Marsh sisters and I loved that book. So every time I see a Little Women doll, I'm reminded of my childhood. That's just a piece of nonsense trivia that nobody cares about but me, but there it is. Anyway, what Madame did, again, go to the coiffures. Who were, the, who were these dolls? There were four sisters, Meg, Joe, Amy, and Beth. These are all Amy dolls. She varied her costume, she varied her hairstyles, and I wanted to show you these because these would all fall within a, just a two or three year time period. But look at how she would do different variations. Now, costume variations are pretty clear for you to see, and you kind of would pick whatever your favorite was. But I wanted to show you the hairstyles. Now, let me take these two, because these appear to be the closest hairstyles, and in many ways they are. However, there are variations in color, there are variations in hair ribbon, and let me turn them around completely so you can see them all the way around. One of them has the hair color that Madame um, called her particular name Tosca, which I'm not sure where it came from, but if you're a collector, you know exactly what Tosca hair is. It's, a, it's sort of like a dark blonde, ash blonde color hair. Tosca, and she has this wonderful dress with a matching velvet ribbons. Her other little, other Amy partner has what I call the um, getting into the saran hair with that high sheen glossy finish, which is so beautiful, it's well preserved. Both of these have completely original, never touched, never combed coiffures. I'll let you see the top of them as well. But then we come over to two other examples of Amy. Amy was made for a while, and it must have been a feature in the book, I don't really remember this, but Amy evidently had her beautiful long hair, and she arranged it at the back of her head in loop curls. And so there was a time period when Madame was making Amy with the loop curls, and they're considered very, very desirable. And here are two examples of the loop, Amy with loop curls. But you see how they are. The hair would actually be down to her hips if it wasn't looped up. But not only is it looped, but it's kind of almost like, it's braided is not the word, but it's like intertwined. So they're beautifully done. And she has the round coiled curls at the back, which are kind of a slightly different color. I don't know why that would be. Um, and she has her original pink bow at the top. And let me show you what it looks like. And once again, you can see the seam where the hair was actually sewn onto the, the cap that would, sewn onto a cap and then the cap applied to the doll. A very, very superb quality of wig. So you have to decide what you most like. Do you like the Amy with the loop curls or do you like the Amy with the very sweet bangs and soft curls and all are desirable. And then of course you have to decide which costume do you like best because they are beautiful. You can pinpoint your costumes exactly most of the time by referencing the Madame Alexander catalogs which she had started to issue about this time and she would have different uh, costumes for different seasons and different years. A following in the century old tradition that even French doll makers like Emile Jumeau had done which was to have different costumes coming out of their studio each year. And I wanted to conclude 
this very short presentation of the more than 300 dolls that are in Rodney Waller Part 3 by showing you some coiffures on the beloved little Wendykins. Now, here's what I say about Wendykins. If you think you don't have room for one more doll in your house, you have room for Wendykins. You can always fit another one in. And what a wide variety of wonderful dolls were made. There were school children, there were parties, there were costumes, there were fantasy figures. They were an extraordinary, wonderful dolls that were being made. And all of the uh, five that are shown up here, each one has a different hairstyle. Let me see what she has under her bonnet. Okay, I remember I took her, brought her out to show you because she has the bangs and little side braids at the side of her head, which you don't find too often. Now, sometimes they made the side braids and, as in her little partner over here, I should have put them side by side, her braids are coiled and then tied with a little ribbon, a little pink ribbon. And these are all original in their costumes, their coiffure, the way their hair is arranged. The whole things are original. And let me show you once again, look at the seaming of her, of her wig. It must be a name for that, but it's like an extra, extra um, uh, stitching that would keep the wig intact. Now, we have three more hairstyles that I wanted to show you. This is a very, very unusual one because it is almost like a side part and then a long tendril of hair is curled back over the forehead and brought up to the crown on her head and then the arranged curls at the back of her hair. Very, very uh, beautiful doll. A very different kind of hairstyle. Showing you the crown. i show you the long curls at the back. The flip curls were a very popular style that she did for a number of years, and sometimes they're quite short, and other times she made them a little bit longer falling onto her shoulders. But a rare side part of Wendykins. And then two examples of little Wendykins that have basically the same style, but with variations. They have bangs, they have rolled curls at the back of the head, they have hair drawn back at their crown, and tied into clusters of curls at their forehead. And that's where they vary. And let me show you the top of each. These are both completely original as they came from the factory. There's the top of each. And here's the back of each. So you can see how they vary. So I've made my plea now for collectors to start paying more attention to the coiffures of Alexander's. I think they are absolutely works of art and really, really important um, pieces to achieve. Hope to see you at that auction. Hope to see you can watch it. You know you can watch the entire auction online and you'll have a great time. Even if you're not in the buying mood, just watch the auction, watch what collectors like, see the dolls brought up to the camera and um, you'll see a little more of the action going on. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach us. We're very personable and easy to reach and you'll pretty, pretty much most of the time get a person answering the phone and talking to you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Enjoy. Bye.